Good morning, my friends. It is Monday morning, April 4th. I know that I've been promising you a video with Stella Coulter, an interview, but I cannot get her to settle down long enough to sit down and do this interview. I gave her a list of questions about renting here in Monta and she graciously answered all these questions for me and I'm gonna I'm gonna cover all that right now as soon as I come back. Hey! Hello there. So there's been a lot of discussion. I get lots of emails from people and lots of questions about uh, renting here, uh, rental availability, uh, apartments or condos to buy. Should I rent? Should I buy? I think if you watched my interview with Mark Bradbury the other day, and if you've listened to some of my other videos, I always advocate that you come here and rent first, at least for six months maybe a year and see if you even like the place before you uh, put down a bunch of money to buy a piece of property that you may never be able to sell. That might be a bit of a stretch to say that you may never be able to sell it, but realistically it's very, it's difficult to sell property here. It just doesn't make any sense to me to come here right off the bat having only been here maybe a couple times for some exploratory trips or whatever without really spending any significant time here and just buying a piece of property. It, it's, just, it's just not, rental. the rental market is booming here and it just makes more sense if you just really think about it. So anyway, I asked Stella uh, 20 questions and she gave me answers and I'm gonna read all this to you now and explain as much as I can. And included in this, this video are, are some clips that I've done of Stella showing apartments and you'll, uh, you know, so I want you to be able to see what she looks like because I, I hope that when you come here, you'll give her a chance to help you uh, find a place to live. Stella is, works very hard at doing this and trying to provide a good service and keep an inventory going and helping managing deposits and and finding the right match for everybody so anyway here we go with the questions uh, my first question to her is what are your feelings about renting versus buying in Ecuador and she said if you're coming here to make a decision to live and I believe you need to do at least need to at least take the opportunity to spend time okay and or at least rent and get to know the area. You've heard me say that before, okay, and Stella agrees with me. Get to know the area, the location, the people, and your surroundings before making the decision to buy. And then she put in here big bold letters, do your due diligence. Do your due diligence. Expats considering living in Ecuador, Monta, need to consider the climate, ocean area, surround area, medical needs, and ease of living that best suits your wants and or needs. I couldn't have said that any better myself. There are people that come here and stay a, at the Poseidon, come here for a month and they stay at the Poseidon and they leave in two weeks. Uh, because maybe it just, you know, th there was some factor that affected their decision or their desire to stay here. Usually it's noise. Manta is a noisy place, folks. And I'm sure we'll hear that during this video. Okay? Did I comb my hair? Oh, yeah. Boy, that would have been a shock. Anyway, so number two, which is the bigger market? Rental, housing, or properties for sale? Her answer was, overall, the rental market for condos, apartments, is the bigger market. Several years ago in Monta, with all the new condos and apartment buildings being built, uh, the construction created lots of properties for sale at reasonable prices. Once most of the properties were purchased, the apartment rental market 
picks back up. Individuals who bought new, who, individuals who bought now wanted to rent their properties. Rental seems to always be bigger. Put bigger in big bold letters. Number three, is it possible to rent an apartment for less than 500? This is a good one. I, I can show you an apartment right down the street here. I think it's 450. It only has hot water in the bathroom. It does not have any air conditioning. It's located between a restaurant and a hotel. If you want to sleep during the week, you probably will, but on the weekend, it's going to be uh, pretty active there in that area. And so you probably will need to get you some good headphones or something, noise canceling headphones. I've seen the place and, I, you know, you get your money's worth, 450. It's not much. Uh, but anyway, her answer is yes, but mostly inner city area and or possible small suite on a side street of a high rise building near the ocean. Most expats coming to Monta or coastal areas are looking for one thing, ocean front or ocean views. Naturally, rental prices are more than 500. As many of you know, I mean, I'm here in this building. It's a nine story building. I rent an apartment on the ninth floor. Um, you can see my view. I have two buildings right across the street from me by see over them and I have an ocean view. So this is called an ocean view property. Uh, the renter wanted $800 for it plus electricity and gas. I talked him into 700 for it, which by the way, folks, remember everything here is negotiable. I talked him into 700 by paying for six months uh, in advance. Fortunately, I was able to do that. And so I saved myself 600 bucks over the term of the lease. You could probably find several $700, maybe $600 apartments around this area. You just have to come and look. You need to hire Stella and let her show you what she has available and then you have to be willing to negotiate don't forget folks everything is negotiable here so number four what is the average cost of renting an apartment or house here in monta high-rise apartments high-rise apartments ocean front range from seven hundred dollars to fifteen hundred dollars to two thousand dollars depending on the building ocean views Ocean views can be anywhere from $700 to $1,000. Houses, $800 to $1,200, depending on the location. There, there again, location, location, location. Everything's location. Now, there are neighborhoods here in Monta where you can see the ocean. You're not as close as I am. Probably can't hear the waves like you do here. And you can probably get a, a, a really nice piece of property for a very reasonable price. But then again, the prices fluctuate all year long, and you have to you have to get in here, get Stella to show you, and you have to be willing to negotiate. Number five, do they have homeowners associations here? Yes, Alaquota, Alaquota, that's what they call it. HOA fees in North America, they do have them. As a renter, you really, I mean, it's, it's usually included in your rent. You don't really see it, you know, but. The Alaqueta, if I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but the HOA fee here covers most places, the, the security, the, the water, that's about it, as far as I know. See, I don't know. I, we have it here where I live, but I really don't know what's included in it. And we're not really talking about buying right now, we're just talking about renting. Number six, what are the average utility costs here? Monthly electric from $35 to $100, depending on the use of the air conditioners. Because of the ocean breeze and area you are living in, ACs may not be necessary until maybe nightly for sleeping. Further away from the ocean, AC may be needed more often. Water for a couple of monthly average $25 to $50, depending on daily or, or washing clothes. So here where I live, I, I, I have, there's two air conditioning units in my apartment. One covers the main room, that's like the living room and the dining room. And then there's a separate smaller unit that covers my two bedrooms. And I barely, rarely, rarely turn on my main air conditioner. Only if it just gets really warm and I, you know, I just can't, and there's no breeze blowing. 
But at night, especially this time of the year right now, and for the last, I'd say for the last three weeks, I've been running my bedroom air conditioner at night when I go to bed. I keep it like 80 degrees and it's, and I have my fan running in there. My electric bill last month was uh, $24 and some change. And that's because of the air conditioning. Without running the air conditioning, my electric bill is $11. So I don't have an electric stove, I have a gas stove. My gas is six bucks. So, you know, it just depends on where you are. If you're right on the ocean here, here ocean front, you know, you're most of the time you're gonna have a pretty good breeze blowing. I open my front door and the wind blows through my place, messes my hair up, blows paper all over the place but it helps keep the floor clean. Included in those in the average utility costs are internet. Monthly averages from 40 to $60, depending on whether you have basic internet, cable internet, or internet speed. It's all, everything's based on that. They have fiber internet here in a lot of places, but not here where I'm at. Comes in on the cable. I have 20 meg internet, whoop de doo I'm not happy with it. But it's included with my rent, so I don't complain. If I just had to have a lot faster internet, my upload's like 10 megs, you know, if I had to have faster, uh, you know, I'd have to pay for it. And then if I'd, I'd have to pay for money, it would be 40 bucks to $60, somewhere in that range. Depends on what speed, I guess. Number seven, do most landlords provide utilities? Well, Depending on short-term rental, one to three months, and or because of the monthly rental costs, landlords may include water and internet, but never, it's in all capital letters, never electric. If long-term rentals, six months to 12 months, most landlords will not include any utilities, and especially if a family is moving in the rental. If using gas for a stove oven, you may be responsible for replacing the gas tanks used. The electric, the reason why they don't supply electric and it's probably pretty obvious to you it was to me is because if you run the electric bill if you run your air conditioner here full time you're going to have a hell of an electric bill if you have electric stove and oven and you're cooking all the time you're going it's going to add up fast landlords are just not going to take that responsibility it's going to be up to you and it's up to you to be as conservative as you want to be or as thrifty as you want to be or as or as, as you know uh, loose about it as you want to be, you know. What's the opposite of conservative? I don't, I don't know. But you know what I mean. So naturally, they're not going to pay for the electric bill. You pay for it. Everybody pays their own electric bill. The worst part about that is that it's not in your name, and if you're over 65, you don't get the 50% discount because it's not in your name. Who cares? It's really pretty cheap. Do most landlords supply internet? Maybe a short-term rental, month-to-month, -month, one to six months, and depending on the rental cost. Long-term rentals, no. Again, depends on the monthly rental cost. Negotiations are always an option. And also, I would say to that, if, if you really want good high-speed internet, you might want to just tell the landlord, no thanks. Now, but see, my internet, I mean, I stream everything. And 20 megs seems to be enough. Sometimes, there's a little latency, some buffering, but you know, all in all, it's pretty good. Back home, I had Gigablast. That was like gigabit internet. It was so fast, you couldn't even, couldn't measure. I mean, it was just super fast. But they don't have that technology here. Ecuador is behind the times in that kind of technology. And who knows when or if they'll ever get caught up. That's kind of a sore spot for me. I don't understand uh, why that has to be that way. Jeez, they got enough wires hanging from all their poles around here that's full of fiber and copper and I, you know, why they can't put in a high-speed internet network. I'd, I'm sure it's just because of cost. So, number nine, what is the average internet quality speed here in Monta? Internet speed is about 5 to 20 megabytes, megabits per second. There are better high speeds available depending if needed for business communicating back to the U.S. or Canada. That pretty much covers that. Number ten. What can renters expect to pay up front to get into an apartment here? Typically, short-term rental, the owner and landlord will ask for at least one month rent for deposit and first month's rent. So, and I think sometimes we call that first and last. Long-term rentals, six to 12 months, the owner landlord may ask for two months rent for deposit and first month's rent up front. 
and the deposit. No, I said that wrong. The deposit cannot be used for the last month's rent when lease ends. The deposit covers any damages and or utilities owed when leaving the property. In the United States, rental companies are required to put your deposits into an escrow account and draw interest. They don't have that here, folks. Sometimes property managers like Stella will keep the deposit for you, and then when you leave, she will do the inspection and make sure that everything is as it was when you moved in, and she'll give your deposit back the day you leave. In my case, the apartment below where I was at before I moved into this one, I had to wait about two weeks and I got a check. And on top of that, they checked, mispronounced, or misspelled my name. They called me Shader Donald or something like that, some stupid name, instead of Don Shader. But fortunately, I have a connection at the bank, and he made it uh, possible to deposit it. So number 11, is there a formal lease agreement with these rentals? Yes. <laughs> you want to call that. A rental lease agreement is about like, about that size, <laughs> that they do have a lease agreement and they, they when you sign the lease here you don't get it like right away they send it off somewhere some registry office here in Monta and they I guess it's kind of like being office deal they verify that there's no taxes owed on the property and they make sure that it's legal and all that stuff and I'm sitting here gagging on some anal poor cigarette smoke two floors below me. They come outside and smoke on their balcony and the smoke, it can't go out to the ocean, you know, or down to the street. It, it all comes up here and right into my lungs. Thank you, buddy. Hope you gag on it. I hate cigarette smoke. I smoked for 32 years. I have COPD. That's why I can't live in places like Cuenca, I don't think. Then I gotta live here and I got this jerk off down here smoking on his balcony and gagging me all day long. Anyway, so that's my rage for this video. Thank you very much. Uh, number 11, yeah, the, the lease agreement. Every rental should have a lease agreement ensuring the renter understands the terms and conditions renting the property. I would not suggest anyone renting not sign a lease agreement to protect them, the renter, and it protects the owner landlord. That just makes, that's sense, that's common sense. What happens if the renter vacates their lease? Breaking the lease agreement forfeits the renter's deposit and some owners, landlords, may pursue the renter for claims of lost rental income for the term of the contract, especially if they cannot, do not have another renter interested in the property. Folks, I'm telling you, you don't want to break a lease here in Ecuador. The law's not on your side. I don't give a damn what your excuse is. Gag, gag, cough. I may have to pause this video. I wish I had a bucket of water. I'd, I'd put that cigarette out. But anyway, don't, don't plan on breaking your lease here. Work it out. You will lose your deposit. And then on top of that, uh, the leasing agent may have to give uh, his or her commission back. You know, and then you may end up with a lawsuit on your hand. It, it's not, it just doesn't work that well here, okay? You just don't want to do it. They can cause you all kinds of grief here. Cause you all kinds of grief, okay? Don't come here and plan to rent an apartment if you don't like it. That's why you should rent for six months. And if you don't like it, you just got to tough it out. Don't, don't break your lease, because not, you're not gonna win, okay, period. We had another question here, 13, but it's kind of a redundant question, so I skipped it. So I'll go to question 14. Assuming a renter completes their lease and they chose not to renew the lease, can they stay on a month-to-month -month basis? Yes, it is possible. If they were in a long-term term, long -term lease and the owner-landlord experienced a good relationship, if this is the renter's address, if this is the renter's interest, it's best to discuss with the landlord, owner landlord, before the lease is up. In the interest of the renter's best interest. Well, you know what I'm saying. If 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 you if you want to go on month to month after your lease expires, talk it out with your leasing agent, your landlord, the owner, before the lease is over, because they may have somebody lined up. You know, they may have a long-term renter, and so you have to you have to talk. Okay. There's a good chance a month to month is possible, but 
even with a good relationship, the owner and landlord may have and or looking to place another long-term renter or may not be interested in month to month once your lease agreement is terminated. Ask up front before your lease ends. Short-term lease, same suggestion. Ask before your lease is ending. That seems to be the best advice for that answer, okay? 15, what is the process of getting your deposit back? Once the owner landlord walks the property and determines there is no damage caused by negligent and or outstanding you, you, utility bills are paid, your deposit should be returned minus any damage agreed to and or utility bills paid. Note, if there is no damage and only outstanding utilities, you and the owner landlord may discuss how much the utilities might be and deduct from the deposit and return the remaining amount possible. If not, you need to discuss on how your deposit is to be returned after paying the utilities and you're gone from the area. That makes common sense. You know, when I, when I left the apartment downstairs, I uh, didn't have an outstanding electric bill, but I told them, I said, if there is a time where there is money due for, you know, a specific time period, just let me know. I, I didn't go away. I moved up one floor. And I told them, just let me know and I'll pay it and I'll be happy to. And that's what we did. And I had to pay a couple dollars or something to settle it, so. Number 16, do you run credit or background checks on potential renters? Typically, no. They don't run credit checks here, folks. Not that I know of. It's kind of a shame, you know, because I worked so hard to keep my credit score up. But they don't do it. I, when I came here, I, you know, I just waltzed right in here like I own the place and rent it to me. They run credit or background checks on potential renters. She said, typically, no, not much of an option. But when meeting and talking with a potential renter, I rely on my instincts and experiences to get a feeling if the potential renter is right for my property. I listen to their wants, needs, and determine if they are right for the property. And if I feel good as the owner landlord leasing the property, both need to work, okay? <clears throat> so a lot of times, you know, it's if they got a good gut feeling about you, they're not going to worry about your background check or your credit score. If you're like me, you don't have any problems. Everybody will rent to you. Number 17, how do people pay their rent here? Is it by check? <laughs> That just kills me. <laughs> Is it by check, cash, or wire transfer? I'll tell you right now, you can forget wire transfer and check, most likely. I can promise you, you can forget the check. I don't know anybody in Ecuador that takes a check. Sure they have them, but you're not going to pay your rent with a check. You're going to pay your rent with cash. But there are exceptions, okay? I paid for my rent by check, but the owner lives in the States and the owner was here when I signed the lease and I wrote a check for my six months rent and then I gave her a check for the deposit and they took it to Florida with them and everything worked out great. But before that, I had to go to the mall two days in a row, go to the ATM machine, get cash, carry my pocket back to here and pay my rent with cash. It's a pain in the butt. Wire transfers, you can do it with a wire transfer if you do it locally. Okay, from like JEP or Bank of White Kill or a local bank here to their bank. That's always possible. She says no checks, typically cash. Other options might be bank transfer or PayPal transfer to the owner and landlord, U.S. Canada accounts or from renter's Ecuador bank account to owner's landlord Ecuador bank account. Kind of like what I just said. Number 18, we're almost done here, folks. What is the average lease term here? Occasionally there might be month to month properties available. However, normally short terms, three to six months, or long terms, six to 12 months. It is not the norm to lease longer than 12 months. It happens, but not the norm. Number 19, are most apartments furnished? Yeah, the furniture I had in the apartment down below was garbage. Most of the furniture in these rental apartments I see are, they're okay, they get, you get by on them. But you know, when you decide if you want to be here long term, it might, behoove you to go buy your own mattress. That's just my opinion. That's my opinion. That's not Stella's answer. That's my my opinion. Are most apartments furnished? She said, yes, especially in high-rise buildings. There are unfurnished apartments, but sometimes difficult, especially if the property is ocean front, ocean view. There are more options with unfurnished houses. There, That's true. There are a lot of options for unfurnished houses around here. And the last question, do you sell apartments, condos, houses? Stella said, yes, condos, apartments, and houses. I have options 
and other realtor contacts throughout the Monta area as resources for all properties. So that's it, folks. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like the, this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to know when I post the next video, ring that bell. It's right there, okay? I, I want to thank all you subscribers for subscribing to my channel. My subscriber count's growing every day. I really appreciate it. I make a little bit of money off of this. I thank you for that. And if you have any more questions or comments about this video, please leave them in the comment section. I look at every single comment and I respond to all the ones that I can respond to. There's some that I just do a thumbs up, you know, that means that I read it and I liked it and, you know, if I had, if I tried to respond, actually type a response to every comment, I'd never have time to do a video. If you have any questions, feel free to write. My email is in the description. Stella's contact information is in the description. And I thank you for watching. Okay, see you on the next one. Ciao. Like take that cigarette and shove it right where the sun don't shine. I don't understand why people want to smoke. Damn losers. Oh, gee, I'm still recording.